Welcome to the Weekly Artifact Behind the Scenes edition. We're very informal episode this week. Uh, we're just wanted to let you guys have a peek behind the curtain as we transition from season one into season two. And so we're just uh, talk about the show a little bit. Uh, I'm still Alex, and, and <laughs> I'm still I'm still Justin. So, so yeah, I figured we would just sort of start with um, where the idea for the show came from. I guess it is sort of related to old intro, soon to be old intro of uh, being a former creative writing major. Because I would, I was, is uh must have been last uh like last December that I came, my New Year's resolution was to either was to do some sort of like creative project. So I was either gonna get back into writing more often or uh, my other wild idea was to potentially start a podcast. And uh obviously I made the wrong decision because we're here now. Writing's hard, folks. Writing's, writing's a lot harder than talking. Yeah, so I, I so I asked Alex um, to join me just because um, uh, we obviously we knew each other previously, and uh, part of it too was um, I was kind of tired of having conversations with people that were too. I guess the easiest way is just too <laughs> ideologically far on the spectrum. I think there's this, and not that those conversations are can't be worthwhile, but I think there's this misconception that the only way to have an interesting conversation is, is if you have two people with like opposite viewpoints who just mm -hmm. talk about something, and I actually feel like that's the least interesting way to have a conversation. So part of the um you part of the reason we came together was to kind of just to at least from from my perspective was to sort of show that you can have interesting conversations about a variety of topics without one person just taking the most boneheaded position <laughs> and you just having to explain to them why they're boneheaded. Like you can actually have a more interesting conversation with both people kind of start from uh, a place of knowing something, having some sort of understanding, or, or at least being on the same page. Well, I fundamentally disagree on every point you just made. Let me tell you why. <laughs> I think the only thing that matters about this podcast is that you solicited me. I think everyone needs to remember that this was your idea and you wanted me on here. You should be thanking me. You're welcome. And I just really think that people need to appreciate the power, what the real power dynamic here is. <laughs> Everything else is just gravy. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, well, for me, uh, I think I've said this before as much on the podcast, but I think, well, you have much more nobler and refined ideas for this podcast and the genesis of this podcast. This was your baby and I just helped gestate it, I guess, sire it? No. Maybe. Yeah, sired it. Um... <laughs> For me, more, this was uh, an opportunity to keep in somewhat consistent contact with uh, one of my all-time greatest uh, frenemies, one of the all-time greatest frenemies in history, uh, <laughs> with Justin. Um, and it's it's fun, and I mean, we get along famously. I'd say maybe even to our detriment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like. Why I like what you said, I like why you did, and I think I mean you're right. I don't know if you I, you said that to me before, and it really sort of blew my mind in the sense of like, yeah, you usually just think like point counterpoint, but if it's like same point, but like let's sort of really get into the minutia here. I'm inclined to agree that's much that's much more fulfilling uh, conversation. Listening to the conversation, having those conversations for me as well. Yeah, so that's sort of why we sort of got into this, and I guess the. There's a specific reason that this show is the weekly artifact, at least from my perspective. Well, so part of it is just because on my personal Facebook, I've 
tried various genres of posting. I, I don't I don't post a whole lot on any social media really. Um but I've tried like various sort of genres of posting, I guess, on Facebook and but the one that all that people really seem to like was I uh will just I, I share different articles but I always make sure to like excerpt a part of it. Um, when I share it, and uh, yeah, I don't know, for whatever reason, people I've just gotten people will come up to me in real life and just be like, "Oh, like you know, I really I, like I learned so much from your post, blah blah, whatever." And so I sort of like realized that for whatever reason, I either had a knack for sharing things people found interesting, or maybe it was uh, the excerpts that I posted were. Uh, easy way for people to like engage or decide if they wanted to engage with it or something and so I sort of considered how how that could convert that sort of mode of curation to convert to some sort of podcast um, and, and so and the other thing I, um, I started to say that I'm interested in is sort of the pace of the internet in some way and how it seems like every oftentimes people are most interested in you know the hot take and always just going to the next thing we they talk about you know the how short like the news cycle can be now and just how quickly you move on from stuff and so you know playing those two things together to think about well you know can we go back and look at older things or like recover some stuff that maybe either was, uh, you know, talked about at one point or maybe wasn't really talked about, just sort of forgotten, but maybe it's worth bringing back. And so that's sort of my reasoning for it, to, to, to combine those things. My reasoning for it to combine those things is because you told me that that is the format. And I think that says a lot about our <laughs> relationship to the podcast and the quality of work we output, broadly speaking. <laughs> Um, I think unfairly there's a running bit that my uh, topics are bad and that's only maybe because we've had to can two of them out of ten and that's neither here nor there <laughs> sort of very much on the spot and as we went along maybe maybe even half with your recording but uh, again you're, you're very much more articulate and uh, um, you're, you're very much more articulate and so, yeah you can stop right there I think you proved your no, point no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I, why, would I, why would you ever let me? <laughs> I got to live off script and I can't even do this. Holy shit. Oh, my God. The, one thing, the thing, the other thing I can't improv about is my own fucking podcast. Oh, that's perfect. Jesus Christ. What were you going to say to you? I don't even know. I, didn't ha I don't think I had anything. I think I was just going to up until either I caught myself up eventually or you fucking shut it down. Thank God the ladder. Thank God the ladder. I didn't have anything better than that. That's for fucking sure. Um, yeah. No, I'm glad we're really letting them behind the curtain with uh, your, your artifacts <laughs> that got scrapped here. All right. But, yeah, listen. <laughs> no, it's it's good. Good. <laughs> I do have one, one thing. My the only time I ever the only thing I've ever tried to do consciously for my articles when choosing them and this the sense of like um sort of something really sort of um intentional and deliberate is I try and I've done it at least once uh, is try to pick an artifact that would be safe room that I would use from a safe room at some point eventually anyways the same topic so that I can sort of do two with one and that's sort of so any time that I can roast within a sort of more uh, scholastic piece is always a, a win-win for me. I think for me, the way I pick my artifacts, I just sort of, I try and let them, I guess, more so come to me. Um, I, I just follow various uh, whatever Facebook pages or news outlets or whatever, or just, uh, you know, content creators. And when I find something that I feel like is interesting and might make a good topic that I'll use it. Or I mean, I've always just sort of kept like on YouTube, like I have like a, I have all favorite videos that I think are interesting. So 
Uh, some of the videos that I've used, I've just pulled from that favorites list. Where I'm like, oh, you know, I favored this, you know, a couple of years ago, whatever. And, uh, you know, now it's a perfect time to pull it back out. And, and I guess, uh, you know, I feel like what makes something interesting to talk about for the show, um, I mean, it could be a variety of things, but I, I try and find something where we can maybe expand on it, or maybe we, we will have some sort of disagreement on on exactly like the best way to utilize some idea or uh something like that just something that you know we won't just be summarizing it but that we can go beyond it a little bit um mm -hmm. but also something that you know i think is worth people reading so i think i know that there are i think there might be i know we don't have like a lot of people in our audience but i I get the. I know there might be a temptation for people to just listen to what we have to say about without reading it, but or watching it or whatever. But I do think there is. My hope really is that people read the the, the thing we're talking about. Look at the thing we're talking about. I guess since we're sort of transitioning into next season, I guess I'll say I, I know we're thinking about uh, you know what sort of criteria we want to have for the artifacts and um i i think i think i mean i think most of the stuff we picked was a little bit older and i don't even know i mean one thing we still have to figure out is like how old is, does this have to be being an artifact on the internet but i think we're gonna gonna try for stuff that's at least a, a full year old if not older perhaps but um and then also just uh making sure there's, there's two artifacts a week, I guess. Yeah, I think I think the best thing, artifact that I do to keep the name true is my, the uh, trumpet at the end. <laughs> uh, or somewhat archival in the sense of, you know, you gotta really keep track of everything this dude says. <laughs> uh, you really don't, but... Uh, <laughs> well, no, I don't, but listen. <laughs> oh, no, collectively we don't have to keep track of everything he says. You're right. <laughs> it's like, like Jesus Christ there's like 12 episodes no I'm not going to say everything he said he's been in the present for 3 years Christ <laughs> I thought that was a roast very defensive always with you on this fucking thing uh, I'm just kidding folks um, but uh, <laughs> yeah about the name though uh, that's a good point yeah I think there might be I mean I assume there's probably some confusion why it's called the weekly artifact even though we don't even, I mean, even in the intro, we don't even pretend that it's going to be weekly, but, uh, yeah, obviously we don't always, uh, even keep to the, the two weeks either, so that's probably, uh, I mean, I mean, one of the reasons is, like, we're, I mean, we're not getting paid for this, and we're not, you know, we're not even asking to be paid for this, um, and so, you know, it's not gonna, could be the first, uh, thing on our to-do list necessarily, and here's the here's the minutia. Uh, no, <laughs> please pay me. Any, I will do anything for money. I will sell the fuck out. Right. Buy it in twenty twenty, baby. Let's go. Blue. I was gonna. I was actually gonna uh, knock doors for Bloom for Bloomby if he stuck around long enough. I was absolutely. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna help, but I was gonna be on the payroll. <laughs> that was how I was gonna fucking make it through the summer. <laughs> that was my plan. So I'm gonna knock on doors and say you vote for Bloomberg. He's a real big fan of fucking stop and frisk. Like, <laughs> like I was mad. I'm still a little chipped about it. I like this is minutia. Yeah, you know, I just like we don't have to get paid, but that is my top priority. <laughs> I'll keep doing it without, but absolutely. So I really need our three fans to make six fans. We can peer bit scheme our way out of this. If everybody just tells two people. <laughs> In five sections, the whole world will know about the weekly artifact, <laughs> which is probably the worst thing that can happen to us, to be honest, at least professionally. <laughs> but, well, I mean, if we get enough likes on our Facebook page, I'll finally be able to to like our own page without raising any red flags, so how's <laughs> that? Um, <laughs> but, but you just need one other Justin to like it. <laughs> But we are going to, I mean, we're always trying to get on some sort of regular schedule. Maybe we'll, um, you know, intentionally slow that down. Uh, I don't know if it will help at all. I mean, this, we, all, we all know that's Alex. That's slowing us down. But, uh, 
It is always with me except one time, and I will hang my hat on that. <laughs> I don't even remember what was this one time. One time, I just had I just happened to edit two episodes back to back. I had a full I had like had a free day, and I just did two in a row. Which I was really feeling ambitious, and I sent them both to you, and you just let the one sit for like a month yes. for one reason or another. I'm sure you had way better reasons than I ever had, but <laughs> I do remember this now. Uh, anyway, but yeah, we're we'll try to get on some sort of more regular schedule. Hopefully, I mean, we do always keep uh, extra episodes recorded. Um, I don't know if that makes it better or worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, the good news is that you we always will put out another episode unless we... I think... I mean, I feel like at this point, we, we if it's going to be our last episode, we would just tell you, like, we don't have anything else recorded <laughs> or we don't have plans to record. Yeah. So so you do always know you can keep, like, the... the, the uh, you know, the podcast will never be dead until we until we say it's dead. Yeah, so that is. But but the, but the name itself as the weekly artifact is really just because I mean we knew it was never going to be weekly, but the, come on, the bi-weekly artifact like I was being it's not as, it's not as cool of a name. You know, the weekly artifact sounds way cooler than the bi-weekly artifact. So. <laughs> <laughs> or you know whatever ends up even, even like the monthly artifact is you know I mean the weekly artifact just sounds better so fuck it daily artifact <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna become one of those day podcasts imagine the audacity <laughs> if that's useful to anybody uh, I when I when I'm doing a good job I should have had a qualifying statement of when I'm doing my best work at picking an artifact, it's something that I would have eventually roasted on the safe room anyways to try to do a twofer for myself. But traditionally where your method is to let the artifacts come to you or you find you stumble upon something, it mine is getting a text from you, cold call text at nine thirty in the morning saying, Hey, what are we recording next? Do you have your article ready? And I go, Hur! and I just scroll through Twitter as fast as I can until I find something that seems fairly woke. <laughs> and on brand for us and then can you imagine that that hasn't worked out sometimes I was better than the ones that we had to cam that's the worst part <laughs> yeah my favorite was um I don't even remember the Cards Against Humanity one. I don't, uh, I'm still so mad about that because I still need to talk shit about Cards Against Humanity, but I'm still so defeated for how bad that episode was. Well, it was great. Um, and this is why, I, you know, I kind of like the behind the scenes where we can give them these secrets. But you uh, like making fun of me. You know, the behind <laughs> the scenes. No, you just want to let everybody else know what you go through. Yeah, the uh, the Cards Against Humanity one that got canned was great because I like I told you before we started recording. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. And you're like, no, it's fine. And then literally, like, halfway through you recapping it, you're like, yeah, yeah it's not going to work. It's so. not going to I was like, I was really so defeated. I was like, this slow, terrible burn introduction, like the Hindenburg crashing at, like, 10 miles an hour. It was it was not pretty. And it felt really good to fully delete that <laughs> from, like, the ether. Yeah, I think we still had two artifacts that week because we, uh, we recorded... This is another secret, too. Sometimes we record the episode over multiple days. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Alex the editing wizard. Uh, <laughs> I can copy and paste like the rest of them. <laughs> I think that's all I have to say about the artifacts. We can probably talk about the safe room, I guess, unless you have something else. No, I think that's that. I think, um... I think, yeah, that's all we have to talk about, the weekly artifact, which can only mean that we're safe to move on to my favorite room. Safe room is uh, interesting, because we never actually explained why it's called safe room. That's true. Because I think, well, so basically, how, how do we explain this without doxing ourselves? I'll do it. I got this. <laughs> I'll take the reins on this one. So, the, the name safe room is a tribute to a room that Justin and I used to occupy very frequently uh, our senior year together at our undergrad. Each club at our school got their own sort of club room that they could hang out and got keys to lock in and lock out and stuff. And it was very, like, rarely used by anybody besides us. 
And so we would take the opportunity while in there sort of away from the rest of campus and away from more sensitive or unwanted ears and eyes to safely uh, talk as much shit as our throats could handle before needing a water <laughs> break, basically. And so eventually, I don't know who, and also I would assume you, but at some point it became dubbed the literal safe room, like, oh, like, like we would literally be like in the middle of a class and like, we're like, yeah, we gotta do some safe room about this later. <laughs> Um, but I can't speak the exact genesis of the phrase safe room. And there was other people involved in safe room, but it was never truly safe room unless you and I were both there because we, it became very clear very quickly when other people were involved that we were the only two that was ever fully committed to going in as hard as possible <laughs> all the time on each other, on everybody else, <laughs> on the people in the room as well as outside of the room. That's where it really became its own thing, where it was sort of the closest that I'll ever be able to skillfully become a... Uh, rap battle where Justin has <laughs> cut his teeth and earned his bread on the cafeteria lunch tables in high school. Uh, I never had the technique nor the classmates to attempt, let alone perfect that, but I can talk shit like the best of them, just not <laughs> in 16 bars. But we'll absolutely go nuclear on one another at any given moment. Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I probably did come up with the, the safe room name just because I feel like I at some point said, like, you're safe to speak here or, or yes. something like that. I, I think it was certainly to sort of let somebody else know the situation here. Let them know the score. Like, listen, this is the safe room. You can say whatever you want and, like, nothing. It's only ever truly the safe room if nobody's feelings gets hurt. Or you can trust people in there to not get their feelings hurt by what's said. And yeah. that's why it could only ever be you and I because I, neither of us could ever fully trust somebody else to not walk away unscathed. Yeah, because I think we, everyone else that we let into the uh, safe room as like a uh, in like a safe room context ultimately could not handle <laughs> the safe room to the point where we had to make like safe words for people to. <laughs> <laughs> get out of certain conversation. Yes, where they were like, "Listen, this the roast is too much right now. Like, I, I got, I got to tap out. Like, this we can't do this right now." <laughs> or you know, people try to set like off limits topics. Yes, or and the battle, it's, the safe rooms immediately dissolved as soon as that happens. Yeah. But uh, it was actually, it was funny because, you know, this was, I feel like this was, like, low-key at the height of the, like, safe space discourse. It, I was just thinking that. But we never, like, we actually didn't realize, like, the connection between safe room and safe space and how they were actually completely opposite, I like, things. Like, right. the safe room is in no way a safe space. No, the exact opposite. Maybe that's our maybe that's our fault. Maybe that's on purpose subconsciously to entrap others. <laughs> it right. became almost a maybe a competition or a point of pride to sort of make sure that everybody else was ever introduced tapped at some point before we <laughs> graduated. <laughs> Yeah, because I think, I don't even remember how, uh, how I came to realize, exactly how I came to realize the safe room, safe space thing, but I know it was someone was confused, they were like, I think, because I think we were explaining it to someone, and, and they were like, I, I thought this was like a safe space, and I was like, oh, I see why you thought that, but no, it's actually not, like, <laughs> But um, anyway, we we weren't originally going to go with Safe Room. Oh, you know what it was? We were debating whether we should call the show Safe mm. Room or make Safe Room like a segment or something. Mm -hmm. And then it just was like, you know, you actually text me. It's like, I don't know like, what I was thinking. Like, Safe Room needs to be a segment. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of how that came in. And then, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's not... The Safe Room segment is actually nothing like <laughs> the, the its namesake Safe Room. Um, yeah. Completely incongruous from both the original <laughs> Safe Room it's derivative of and also the rest of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't go in nearly, because I'm sure at this point there's probably, uh, you know, if anyone's listening, they're, they're probably like, what you know, I don't remember you guys ever going nuclear in the safe room segment, or you know, thinking that if that's our version of nuclear, that we're I don't you know, whatever. But uh, no, no, we we had to just like tone it down a little bit for uh, because we're you know, it's a broader audience and you know, various reasons. But uh, the most behind this, do you know what I'm for you when I say the one time I, I actually did go nuclear and you. Uh, insisting this was our, I think our biggest creative difference to date is you insisting that I cut, I cut something out from one of my safe room talks. 
Which one is it? it well, I'll give you a hint. It's the cyberbullying one. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one was... <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. I think... Uh, yeah, I think in general, um, the pol- I don't remember where I heard this, but I heard this somewhere, but my policy is... Uh, you know, no joke is worth losing our jobs over or whatever. So, which I fundamentally disagree with. I do appreciate you reining it, reining me in. If I ever hope to actually have a professional career or run for political office at some point, this could really kick my ass. Like especially the things that got cut out. Uh, but fundamentally, I disagree and always go for the bit whenever possible. I still have unedited Trump bit as for one of the MP3 files. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, there is that. Obviously, there's stuff that doesn't make it in the show, but I am proud that we do edit the show because I listen to a lot of podcasts that <laughs> just aren't edited. Oh, it's super hard. I probably would have annoyed me anyways, but knowing A, like how to edit myself and B, how sort of, in a lot of ways, easy it is to edit, at least even just dead air, like it's just infuriating to like hear it now you're just like buddy come on like really yeah, like, yeah we have podcasts that are way bigger than us that actually like pull in money that just like don't i did uh, i mean like i get like, editing definitely takes time and like that's probably like the number one reason why our schedule gets thrown off but it's also like not it doesn't take that long especially if you're like a bigger podcast let me tell you, it, this might be, uh, I'm shooting myself the foot here, but it definitely doesn't take that long. <laughs> Especially just for like, because I've seen so many where it's like, you literally just like hear the person talking to me like, oh, hold on, I gotta like check oh my this, God. Or grab this or whatever. It's like, that need, like even if you don't edit anything else, click. You, it takes like five button clicks to just take that one segment out. And, Absolutely. Uh, so I, yeah, I'm, I'm proud that we do edit ours. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean that some some stuff is a little bit too hot, too hot for tender ears. But that's true. Uh, I mean, how it usually works is we do the raw raw audio recording, and then I'll do sort of the major first, all of editing, get it together, put the sound effects in, everything, this that, and then give it to you, and then you will sort of a give it another l- listen over, both in case something like doesn't sound right, and also be a sort of a content editor to say like maybe this maybe this is too much or this is sort of not good in one way or another uh will not use one of the forsaken words <laughs> and i think probably like one out of every three or four you'll sort of make an executive decision or sort of run it past me i guess is the better way to put it like hey i'm like think we should probably get rid of this or like i just cut this because it like wasn't like working or it wasn't worth it and i'll i mean i've never disagreed with you to the extent of like it doesn't get changed but um, mm-hmm. there is multiple layers of sort of uh, quality control. Yeah, we are a peer-reviewed uh, <laughs> publication here. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we've gotten into a pretty good system of editing, so I, I feel like that will continue on. And just to finish off then the, the, the safe room discussion, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like this is kind of obvious, but, you know, we obviously we just pick stuff that sort of, uh, I hate, yeah, I mean, so, sometimes I do feel like it's that sort of, this is kind of a strange reference at this point, but uh, that grind my gears, like, there's that one so family guy <laughs> yes. where kind of made that, like, tell me this is getting right from this family guy as soon as you say grind my gears, oh my god. <laughs> you can tell how old that bit is by the fucking uh, animation quality of the show. <laughs> but uh yeah i mean obviously even that you know was making fun of like this general thing where it's just kind of this segment that i'm sure you're probably familiar with where people just pick something that's like pissing them off or whatever it's it's kind of just like that but um but with our own sort of been on it with our history with the safe room and yeah, I feel like that one's a lot more open. It's kind of—I mean, I feel like the only thing we always—I think like we always do try and tell people to like do something differently rather than just complaining, which I guess is right. Good, but, but yeah, so that—that's sort of just how that um, came about, and then you know, in season one, Alex ended with the we call the Trump bits, which sounds like trumpet, but it's Ooh. Trump bit. yeah. Oh, maybe we could have an intro of like a <laughs> yeah. This is the trumpet. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I've gotten uh, 
you know, I'll just I'll be generous and say mixed reviews on on that segment. So we're we're, we're working. I'm a trap head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who does which fucking mega piece of shit doesn't like my Trump? <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know, I don't know, you know, easy. It's like you know, hitting the hitting the you know, low hanging fruit. I think I think kind of he's the president. I don't give what he's. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying we're getting rid of. I'm just saying we're you know we're workshopping it. We're, we're workshopping it. It is getting. It is yes, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then obviously that's the you know after that the show ends and we you know intro we music is from uh, it's original music we you know, use credited Nicholas Pizzuto so it, interesting about the music I guess I'll say is the uh, <laughs> uh, the the actual like full score for that contains what sounds like a machine gun firing off which we we had to edit out um, so that is. That's always interesting. And also, I noticed there's like people like talking. Yes. I don't know. There is some, I've been what's... trying to parse out the audio. And the thing, another thing about that audio is that I don't, I'm almost certain I have the original somewhere on my computer, but Nicholas himself has since lost the audio oh, that he, God. after he gave it to me on like an old laptop, he no longer has the original like be constructed anywhere. So like we, I mean, there's no way to prove that there was a gunshot at some point. <laughs> <laughs> There's also no way to prove that it's his music. We could just that's you know, true. Music <laughs> by Justin and Alex. I mean, sh- yeah, just take down every episode and put it back up immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's interesting because yeah, I know in some episodes the music quality um, dips a little bit. Uh, where hopefully that won't happen. Yeah, so, I've I've amended that. Um, but yeah, but that was cool that we were able to get original music and artwork. The artist has not yet asked to be credited. Um, I asked the artist, I was like, how do you want to be credited? And they told me they would let me know. And they have never let me know. I've even, uh, you know, asked, the, I, I followed up with them. Um, and I still have not gotten any response for that. So, uh. They listened to one episode and said, I'm good. <laughs> it's all right. You just keep that between you and me, Justin. <laughs> but yeah, it was good that we got uh, original music and artwork. Although I will say I did the uh, I did the Photoshop work on the Halloween special. Oh, no, so. true. Credit. A lot of work went into that. You know, I had to <laughs> find the right shade of orange. And you know, there's, like, there's a couple of the right shade of green as well. And then there's a couple of lines. On the pumpkin. Uh, so. The original artist is seething right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I'm hoping we can do more, um, perhaps more special episodes. But we'll we'll see if that pans out. And I mean, how, I, I kind of uh, I feel like Halloween's a popular holiday right now. I also kind of enjoy it. So yeah, um, but, but maybe we'll try some other ones too. We'll see. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy overall with how season one turned out. And um, he said we got some things planned for some changes planned for season two to hopefully make it better. I, I think the show will mostly be the same, but you know, just with some tweaks. But uh, but I'm excited to start recording season two, uh, one and a half years in. <laughs> Just arbitrarily cutting off the season. Ah, what are you gonna do? To be fair, it wasn't totally arbitrary. Uh, <laughs> when we made the decision to end the season, we were at a pretty much at a year. Um, and to be <laughs> fair to us, to be fair to us, the you know we did have a whole global pandemic. I'm not saying that that had anything to do with us being delayed, but I'm not saying that didn't. I so to be fair to my editing skills, I have been exclusively confined to my computer in my house 24 hours a day for the last three months. So it's hard. All right, <laughs> folks, it's hard. <laughs> Well, I don't know, we don't really talk about cutting it. Well, we did talk about cutting editing, but just the <laughs> the whole Natalie and Contra Prince thing where I just put the elevator music over instead of fully cutting it out just for the sake of the whole can roast. Yeah, I do I do like the elevator music. Uh, I think I think our listeners like the elevator music too. I'm trying to figure out maybe you'll figure this out. I didn't really spend enough time on it, but just how, I just want to add like the you know, the beep over things. Just like beep yes. things out. Yeah, I'm sure it's, it's probably super easy to do. I was just being lazy. But, uh, 
So I was trying to like distort the audio until it sounded like a beep. I probably you could probably just sound oh more than beep. Oh my god, that's that's so <laughs> that's that's such a you way to go about it. Like it's so <laughs> up its own ass. <laughs> well, like it's better because you keep your like the content kind of, the audio is still there. But, like <laughs> oh my god, I can't imagine. I would never think to do that in a million years. <laughs> that's so funny. I love that. You say yeah a lot. I'm like, why was that literally the first thing that came to my mind? Like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Absolutely buck wild. I love it. <laughs> Holy shit! I'd like to think that's why the podcast works, though. So. I I do too. <laughs> oh my god! Different minds. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is just a. Uh, a little, a little peekaboo behind the curtains. Yeah, I always felt like this was sort of uh, something we should do eventually, because I feel like the, I feel like I mean I feel like by now everyone who listens listens to the show understands what the show is, but there's mm-hmm. no way that you would know like why it was called the safe room. So I felt like it was quite good to yeah. give some explanations for stuff. So it is weird to have such like sort of like a rinky dink show. Like I actually do have some like mythos behind it. <laughs> <laughs> at least in our own small way season two is when we blow up absolutely the world building will be unprecedented we are former creative writing majors <laughs> season two will formally begin uh whenever house edits the episode and uh then we'll we'll see you right back here for another uh more artifacts and more safe rooms I love all the listeners, but don't hold your breath. Uh, and as a final unworkshopped trumpet, Justin, but also somewhat uh, thematically appropriate because it is a sort of a shift from what it usually is, should Trump get more credit for saying he could shoot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue and he wouldn't lose any voters? Because <laughs> I think he's only been proven correct by history. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he wasn't. He wasn't congratulating himself. I think he was just stating a fact. I, th- I think we should have taken him more at his word and not really added any context. For for what it's worth, it does look like um, season six will still have some trumpets in it. So, <laughs> it's like to say another another Trump year presidency. Is that what you're saying? For what it's worth, that's what it, uh, that's what it's looking like. So. Well, apparently, it needs to get edited, so it's not worth much. Just it's worth my, plenty for me, but <laughs> big listener isn't a big isn't a fan. So, what the fuck do I know? 